What is up guys, Jeffy Gaming here, welcome back to my F1 2016 career mode, this is Season 3, the Malaysian Grand Prix, so we're closing in on the end of Season 3, it's been a very enjoyable season, if you have missed any of it, do go check out the previous videos, and do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, you can see, we are closing in on our teammate Nico Hulkenberg, the gap between us is 12 points, but we're looking to overhaul him, and get a solid uh, P5, uh, top 5 finish in the driver's standings, but we have an upgrade first. Got something you'll be interested in. Those performance upgrades we discussed after the last race. They're on the car and the data looks promising. Take a look at the details. So here is our final upgrade of the season as we did seeds R&D after the Archie just before the Singapore Grand Prix. But there are fourth out of five upgrades in terms of drag so yeah the car is looking pretty good now and so is our driver position it's just it's strange thinking back that i was in the red for probably most of the first third of the season so we've definitely improved things over the year the car's getting better and it's it's looking good for next season though we want to try and get as many points as possible at the moment and we've jumped up to third best car overall still renault are quite far ahead but it's very close between ourselves ferrari and Red Bull, Mercedes lacking a bit further behind, but it's looking promising. So we should have some pretty big upgrades at the start of next season. You can see we've had three podiums so far this season. And a decent uh, finish last time out in Singapore, which was very surprising indeed. But in terms of Malaysia, we actually won last season, so that was fantastic. We overtook Max Verstappen in the final corner and P7 in Season 1. So I'm looking forward to this, and also we have news of a new rival. Hey. Looks like you've got a bit of rivalry going on out there. This is good. Gets people talking about you. Just make sure you outperform them, okay? I'm going to be honest, that's exactly who I expected it to be. That is who I wanted it to be. And I'm very happy to be going up against my teammate. I'm aiming to beat him in the standing, so that's extra motivation. Hopefully we can actually beat him because he's beaten us 3-0 so far over the career. Let's hope things improve. Let's get to qualifying. So, we skip on to our final lap. First lap got us up to, uh, I say up to, up uh, kind of down, very low down in P19. And on our final run here, we've got a vast improvement. We're taking the bollard with us. Not a great entry through that corner. Um, I've struggled so much over the years with that. But I thought I'd improved on this game. But we're over a second up, so we should shoot up the order. I'm not sure how far up, if we'd even get into the top 10. But we've missed the apex of the final corner. Don't think it affects things too much, but DRS... Everything coming to the line. What's it gonna be? I felt pretty positive about that lap and it was P11 just outside the top 10 So we get a free choice of tire Less than a second off pole position and it's Nico Rosberg of all people That's a big surprise considering how poor Mercedes are doing at the moment and his teammates in P14 Not sure what happened there. We got beat by our teammate, but we've got the free choice So we're here setting up the strategy for the Malaysian Grand Prix. There is going to be rain around 75% into this race based on the weather forecast. So I'm going to start on the mediums and then move to the hards. Try and make one less pit stop than the AI, possibly two depending on where they go with strategy. But it's going to be very interesting because it's supposed to dry out after the rain as well. So we're building up to the Malaysian Grand Prix. Looks very sunny now. Let's see how it pans out later on. Five lights and... Away we go. Can we get a good start on these medium compound tyres? Looks like Harry Anto's shooting straight past me. The man is once again getting a fantastic start. The Williams of Bottas is going for a move as well. We're on the same compound, so he's definitely got a better start than us. We go up the inside of the Torosso and the manner of Harry Anto. So side by side through turn one. Let's see if we can make up any positions here. We go around the outside of uh, Verline. There, the two manners are side by side. Harry Anto doesn't get a great run, so we easily retake the position off him. Now we're going to try and close in on his teammate Pascal Verline. Let's see if we can go for a dive bomb into turn four. Is it turn four? We made slight contact with the back of Kimmy, but there's no damage, so we're okay. Up to P9, solid start. Let's see how. 
we do compare to the soft compound runners ahead because obviously they've got the quicker tyres on. If we can keep up with these and then they'll be pitting early, it should work out pretty well for us. So on to lap two now. We're looking at the cars ahead. It's the two Ferraris battling with Verstappen, who obviously doesn't have the best straight line speed, but Vettel on the inside of Verstappen will turn to the inside. Let's see if we can pick up any scraps here. There's a big battle ahead of them as well. The two Nicoles are slowing everyone up. We've got much better traction than Kimi there. Up to P8. Also trying to take P7 from Max Verstappen. He could squeeze us onto the curb. Doesn't do it really. We try and squeeze him. Try and psych him out. Go around the outside into the braking zone. And we've got the move done. Brilliant move there. We've taken two positions in a matter of corners. And now let's see what happens with the train ahead. Because as I said before, the two Nikos, Hulkenberg and Rosberg, are seriously holding up the cars behind like Palmer. Vettel and who's uh, Ricardo's the other one in there so looks like Palmer's got ahead I think Hulkenberg has, has as well they're side by side and this is this is just playing into the hands of Kevin Magnussen it always does the amount of times Kevin Magnussen's just run off into the distance because there's been slower cars behind him I don't know how Nico Rosberg got pole position but they're slowing the rest of this pack up up the inside of Vettel we should easily get this done. We do indeed. And this is allowing us to stick with these guys on the medium compound tyres. This really is playing into our hands. But uh, if we can make one less pit stop than these guys, that would be brilliant. So Ricardo's in the pits. So is Palmer on lap four. So that's a very short stint indeed. That shows that the softs aren't going to be that great. And if I don't have to use them at the end... Then that could help us out. I feel like these medium compound tyres are probably the best in terms of the race tyres. So, ahead of us, the two Nikos, again, are going incredibly slowly. Like Hulkenberg, I've got so much more pace than him. His tyres surely can't go be going off that much. And this is allowing me to close on the Mercedes of Rosberg. We should get this done pretty easily. I'm into the braking zone of Turn 4 once again. I do apologise if it's not Turn 4. I'm just picturing the track in my mind. I think it is Turn 4. But let's hope we get past our teammate very quickly. He seems very slow. Magnussen's miles ahead now. And... This is a good track for me, but still, I didn't expect to be this much quicker than my teammate. And it does show how slow the Mercedes is, because Rosberg probably didn't... I don't know how he got pole position at all. Felipe Massa is out of the race. We'll see a replay on board with the Toro Rosso here. <laughs> following Felipe, his Mercedes engine is gone. That's very brave following that closely. But, uh, of course, safety car is out. And I was thinking at this point, I am going to get absolutely screwed. What do I do now? Hulkenberg's definitely going to come into the pits. Along with Magnussen in the lead. If I follow him, I'm going to lose so many positions. If I stay out, I'll take the lead. But I'll be on worn tyres compared to the rest of the field. So I decide to take the gamble and stay out. I don't think my tyres are that worn. I think around... I think it was 28%. We should see it in a second or two. Yes, we do. 20 or 29%, which isn't too bad. So this kind of confirms that we could one-stop before the rain comes. So that does help us out in a sense. But it means... I've got to rely on the likes of Bottas and Sainz, who are the cars between myself and Magnussen, to keep them back. So, the first car that has pit is in P4. So, here we go. The restart. Away we go. Can we pull away from the cars behind? Well, probably, because... Mag uh, not Magnussen. The Williams has gone into the pits. So, it's only Carlos Sainz between myself and Magnussen. And he's on the soft compound tyres. So, he's going to have to make another pit stop very soon. It's just confirmation. The AI strategy, especially with safety cars and wet weather, is absolutely awful. Magnussen is in the pits again. He's pit twice and I haven't pit yet. Um, make what you will of that. That's incredible and... I don't know. It, it's going to help us out, I think. So Rosberg behind us is on fresh mediums. So he is our biggest threat at the moment. And we'll be looking to pit at the end of this lap, which we do indeed, because I've been told that, I think it was on lap 10, that the rain is coming in around 15 minutes. So we could say that's about 9, 10 laps. So around lap 20 we're looking at. I could have gone for the medium compound tyres, but I went for the safe option on the hards. As we get held up a little bit in, the, in that pit stop, we come out behind Magnussen, so he has executed the undercut. I could have gone for mediums, actually, thinking about it, but I wanted to make sure we could take these tyres till the rain comes, and I'm pretty sure the rain will be coming. So we've come out in P11. It depends when the AI pits in regards to the rain. I mean, they could pit once before the rain, but they could pit twice, who knows. Kvyat ahead of us. I couldn't believe how quickly I closed in. I mean, really, I don't really expect to be overtaking a car on the inside in the middle of sector 2. 
two, but he has got problems with his car. Not sure what, but he's incredibly slow. Don't expect him to be getting many points on this one. So, lap 14, we're closing in on Nico Rosberg, who's on the soft compound tyres, but I think he's timed it well in terms of the rain. Felipe Nasa, he is getting in the mix as well. Could do with uh, getting some points for Sauber who still haven't scored any points in this career. It's pretty embarrassing, really. But uh, we get a run on Nazar. Should easily get this move done. You can see the, cl uh, the clouds are... I can't even talk about the clouds. They're rolling in. They're looking very dark and ominous as Rosberg... We try and close in on him. There's a Ferrari just ahead of him. I'm not sure which one that is, but he could be in the mix. It's going to be interesting how this all pans out because uh, we all know what the AI like in terms of strategy. I say it all the time. But uh, now, who is in the pits? It's Rosberg, Magnussen as well. I think Palmer pit on the last lap. So they're just... It's stupid because... Is it raining? There might be a few spots of rain now and they're going in the pits for dry tyres. It's It makes no sense at all. So the cars around us who are yet to pit are the ones that are probably going to be fighting for the victory. The spots on the camera lens now. And look at the mini-map. There's so many cars going into the pits. And what you know, they're going in for dry tyres. It's unbelievable. The AI is so dumb. Oh man, they need to adjust to the situation a lot better. So it looks like... Me, Vettel and Verstappen are making the right decision. At the end of lap 20, it's definitely time for intermediates. It's a very big struggle at the moment, as you'll see as we go into the pits. Just keeping the car out the wall, we take it to the grass, but we're okay. Hopefully we can slow it for the pit line as well. Don't want to be throwing a potential podium away here. So Vettel is the first on the intermediates. We're going to go on the inters as well. And we're getting held up. I think Verstappen has jumped us. Thank you very much. A six second pit stop. Unbelievable. So... But, uh, my teammate is now only just coming to the pits. He's miles out of the picture. Them, them cars that pit a couple of laps ago are just nowhere near at all. They've probably pit possibly four times compared to my two, which is not going to work at all. So as we look at the minimap, Vettel is absolutely miles ahead. If he doesn't win this, then there's serious problems. It looks like it's going to be a battle for P2 between Verstappen, myself, and Julian Palmer behind. But... As we move on to lap 25, the rain is, it isn't as heavy as it was before. It looks like it's going to uh, start drying out in the next couple of laps, which should make things very interesting. And I'm closing in on Max Verstappen here. Very reminiscent of our battle in Season 2, where I overtook him on the final corner of the final lap to take the victory. For this time, it's only for P2, but let's see what we can do. We're closing, closing on the start finish straight. We're going to go for the lunge into turn one, just like Max would, and we've gone very deep. We have locked up. Looks like he's going to retake P2, but we do seem a lot quicker than him, as you'll see here, as we get a fantastic exit. I don't know what's hap happened to his traction there, but we get P2. Can we keep ahead of him? He's very close. We swipe across him just to keep our position. Now we're going to have to defend... Verstappen is going to be very late on the brakes. Is he gone in too deep? I think he did lock up. We've gone a little bit deep as well, but we've taken P2. Let's see if we can defend the position for Max. Palmer isn't a threat now. It's between myself and Max Verstappen for P2, but the track is drying out. That's going to make things very treacherous and interesting as we use these inters on the drying track. But big news here. Kevin Magnussen on the penultimate lap of the race just pulls over he's retired I don't know what his problem is but in terms of the championship that is going to help out for Stappen and Palmer I think they're going to be the main threat to uh, Magnussen's championship but they're only in P3 and 4 so they're not pouncing as they could do but for Stappen looks like he's going to be very close going into turn 1 here much later on the brakes once again can we keep him behind it's very tricky we're struggling to turn the car in is he going to go around the outside no he's not we cover him off Let's see if we can defend P2 from Max here on the final lap. You can see we're just struggling to get the power down. And we're coming to the very tricky penultimate corner. Can we keep Max? We need a good exit here. It's not too bad, but Max, it looks like he's coping with these conditions a little bit better than us. Sebastian Vettel has won the Malaysian Grand Prix. Verstappen's closing it into the final corner. Will he do what we did to him last season? He's going to be later on the brakes once again. Can we hit the apex no we've missed the apex but we're keeping the car in the right place to defend the position traction isn't too bad we're coming to the line and we're going to get p2 on the podium our fourth podium of the season that was a fantastic drive to take 18 points Verstappen finally overtakes us after the line Sebastian Vettel takes the victory it just worked out perfectly for him his strategy was pretty much perfect I think mine was pretty good as well. The AI being as dumb as ever, we we can't do anything but take advantage of that. I can't make an extra pit stop, but 
I'm very happy with that podium. Very enjoyable race there. Max Verstappen gets 15 points over Kevin Magnussen, which should make things interesting in the standings as the him and Palmer try and close down the lead driver in the championship. So we look further down. Paul Sitter and Nico Rosberg finish fifth. Fernando Alonso finally gets some points this season. A fantastic drive there for P6. And you can see the cars are pit like four times. Verline, Ricardo, Hamilton, Hulkenberg. Shocking race, shocking strategies, and it just didn't work out for them. We only made two stops, and I think we're the only car to do that. That's how things worked out very well for us. Starting on the mediums, as I said before, did work well. I suppose Gutierrez did, but he finished down in P15. We can see Magnussen, that's the key retiree. That's going to make things very interesting for the championship battle. As his huge lead, it's still quite big, but it has been cut down to 41 points as Verstappen and Palmer change positions. We're up to P5. We've overtaken our teammate. Six-point buffer to him. That should help us in the driver rivalry as well. So that battle is going to be very interesting. And we are closing up on Raikkonen. Maybe we could get into the top four. It's going to be very intriguing for the rest of the season. Japan, I think, is next time out, which is a strong track for me. So I am looking forward to that one. Hope you guys are as well. As you look further down the order, we can see Fernando Alonso, eight points in Malaysia, jumps over his teammate. McLaren, absolutely shocking in this career mode, as you can see in the standings there. We are 100 points behind Renault. I think it's safe to say Renault have won this. So if you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time out. Goodbye.